Well, it's a beautiful, warm day in late January. Got to be around 63, 64 degrees out here. Pretty unusual for this time of year for us. Generally, I have a foot of snow on the ground and ice on everything. Well, I took the opportunity to take apart a Victor Victrola 50. And you can just see some of the things that uh, are done to it. The spring, for instance. This one's not in terrible shape, but I'm going to replace it anyway. I took it out. This is what you usually see when you take them out. Actually, it's not as bad as you usually see. This one's got some crud on it, and you can see the spring can there. Pretty nasty, but not terminal. I've seen some where everything was solid and all crusty and nasty. And this is the uh, motor frame. And you can see somebody had made an attempt to lubricate it using white grease on absolutely everything. I mean, white grease has its place. It does work very well on the gears and such, but it really doesn't belong slathered all over the entire motor and the gears that's really not how you're supposed to clean and lubricate a victrola motor you take it apart as you see here you clean it properly i use gasoline but you must be very careful when doing that and then you reassemble it with the new grease and i like to rebuild the governors which where is the governor i'll find it there it is down there that's going to get new springs and that's the machine. This is a very early Victor Vitrola 50. It's a 17,000 series, I think. That makes it early 1921. Mahogany case, you can see, is extremely well preserved. It's not even cleaned yet, and since this nice. Yeah, 17,402. See what a Victrola 50, early 50 case looks like when it's hollowed out, no motor inside of it. Very nicely made, and you can see those are all solid mahogany boards. Really nice workmanship on these machines. And this one does not have any issues with cracks on the back. As you can see on this, that little stay right there is all that holds the lid from flopping back. And when it does, these panels can split right off if you're not careful. Now this machine was special for another reason, not just being an early 50, with they're all special, but this one had been upgraded by a previous owner to use the Victrola number four reproducer. This was the last, you know, before the uh, orthophonics came out that Victor made, and probably the best. But this one in particular is interesting, something you don't often see. This is a Victrola number four, not a 4A. 4A was a zinc bodied reproducer, exactly the same in appearance, but they used zinc, which was fine in 19. 26, 27, 28, but what would happen is that they would begin to swell and crack with age into granular corrosion, which split these things apart, and then when you get them, nearly a century later, they're useless and just impossible to fix. But this is an all brass, number four. Very rare, only made for a few months when Victor first began production, and they switched over to the pot metal design because it was cheaper and lighter and it didn't really need to be all brass. Not in 1926 and 27, you know, back then, the zinc one, or pot metal if you prefer, was just fine. It worked. But today, you just can't find them anymore in good condition. But an old brass like this, this means that uh, the owner of this machine decided to upgrade very early on. And he lucked into an actual Victrola number 4. Now, when these things trade, they're usually... 200, 250. I, I've seen them go quite high. This one will need rebuilding, and I'll do that later. New gaskets. I'll replace this back gasket. The gaskets in here. The mica actually looks good. I'm probably not going to change the mica on this one because there's no cracks. It's not delaminating. You have to take apart, you know, here and clean all the little ball bearings out in there and re-oil everything. It's not that hard to do. This one's even pretty straight. It's pretty well aligned. I'll double check that when I redo the gaskets, but I don't think that's going to be any issue. I'll probably leave this with this machine, being that it did come on it. Very rare to see and very hard to come by. You do not see very many of number actual Victrola number fours offered. You see four A's all the time, but if you do decide to buy a four A, you better make sure it's not just crumbling apart completely to the point where you can't even play it anymore. Because your only other option would be to try to find one of the HMV number fours, which remained all brass for a number of years, while Victor only did it for a number of months. 
So sometimes you can go to UK eBay and get an old brass number. The British HMV number fours are exactly like these, except they don't have the little styling lines here. But they're the same reproducer. The parts are leaving it to change. Except that they did also go to pot metal a little bit later on. So you have to be careful there. That's what you see, you know. Just a nice day out here. I'm hoping it's not going to start raining on me. That sky is getting a little gray, but we'll hope for the best. And see if we can't get this motor all cleaned up and back together and performing like it's supposed to. For 17,402 over there. Okay.